Dalit, that at first presentation, after intravitreal antibiotic, patient has presented to you. What is your indication for vitrectomy? Immediate, because yeah. if, if no, patient... he has received the intravitreal antibiotic, and next day or maybe subsequent day, 48 hours, he has presented to you. Yeah, what I would say is, if if there is some improvement, I would wait. But if there is no improvement or deterioration, as Dinesh said, I I will recommend early vitrectomy in this. Dinesh. See, when the patient comes to me, if there is no glow, it said, I will not wait. That's it. If the patient has a peripheral retina visu visualized, that means it's, it seems that now it's clearing up and the glow is there, I may wait for another 24 hours and see whether this is on the improving side or going downside. Dr. Nayak? No, whatever picture is shown on the right side, if that type of situation is there, then the straight away should be vitrectomy. Okay. What I wanted to actually put across is that if after first antibiotic injection over 48 hours, the vitreous is not cleared enough to permit a good retinal view, then it amounts to same situation which Dinesh was commenting when I was showing that grading of vitreous yep. haze. You regard it as a vitreous haze of a particular grade. Ignore the fact that you have given antibiotics and go for surgery. That to was put it in quantified terms, your grade 3, the, the yeah. picture which you showed, if I see that picture, I'll wait another Still day. Still you go for vitrectomy. I'll wait at that for okay. 24 hours. Okay. If you are at 4, mm. where I'm not seeing uh, enough, definitely a vitrectomy. Okay. 5, of course, there's no question. Okay. Now, it calls for a different approach while doing vitrectomy in endophthalmitis cases in terms of the infusion needle, cutting the vitreous, base shaving, etc. Dinesh, can you please detail on it? Yeah. See, the most important thing is you must have a 6 millimeter cannula. Now, <coughs> this was not such a problem when we were using 20 gauge because you used to get 6 millimeter cannulas. But now with 23 gauge vitrectomy, you have to be very careful. Some of the cannulas are not big enough. So you have to see the cannulas which have the widest, uh, the, the uh, longest. biggest, longest size. And I don't put them, don't put them sideways, don't put them at an angle, put them straight down. That's the only way to in increase the depth to which they go through so that they can go through a boggy choroid. The second aspect is about cutting the vitreous. There are two types of patients who come to you. First is the kind of patient who has a PVD. So you do a vitrectomy, you're able to clean. The moment you, you find there's a PVD, the moment you clean, you find that actually you, you can see the, you can see the, um, the retinal details and as you complete the, uh, the removal of this pus, you actually see that the retina is, is normal pearly gray. The second type is where you get no PVD and there is a haze. The conventional method of managing this kind of patient used to be just do as much as you can do, even if you don't see the disc, leave it. The fact is that we described a technique for a radical vitrectomy where we remove this the same has been 10 years later been compared in a study called the sieve study. And they found that if you do a complete vitrectomy, where you actually clean up everything, go all the way um, and remove the, and even induce a PVD when necessary, you can get much better results. And the number of patients, the proportion of patients who get better than 612 vision goes up three times. So that is the importance. If you have that situation where Visualization is there. See, the important thing here is visualization. You can't induce a PVD if there's no visualization. So if you have visualization and you see there is no PVD, but you can induce the PVD, you do that. But in a, you will not need this in more than 25-30% of cases. The rest of the cases, there will be a PVD. You remove the initial vitreous and you find completely clean uh, cavity after that. Okay. And there, the conventional vitrectomy is adequate. What will be your choice, 20, 23 or 25? Yeah. For end of uh, 23 gauge vitrectomy is much cleaner and also less traumatic to the eye. So okay. I would prefer 23. Okay. I don't have 25. Um, 25 could be tried when you're doing a conventional uh, vitrectomy and probably would be even more, more uh, atraumatic than the 23. Dr. Nayak, yeah, please. In endothelmitis, I personally think 23 is better than 25, even if it is available. Yeah, that's it. The reason, the reason being, uh, you see, if you have to depress or do a radical yeah, that job, can you, cannot the be instruments done. may bend slightly and it that's may not. Uh, that is not possible to do with 25 gauge. There is a recommendation that in delayed end of thalmitis, Dr. Nayak, you should inject in the capsular bag. You should also do a posterior capsulotomy. 
so that it goes into the vitreous. You should remove the intraocular lens if there is an indication for that and you should remove the intraocular lens and the entire zonulocapsular assembly. What is your comment, Dr. Nayak? Now, if it is your, means probably your suspicion is bacterial, then it is not recommended to remove intraocular lens implant, but of course you do posterior capsulotomy as well while doing vitrectomy. But if the patient is having a suspecting fungal infection, then probably it will be, it will be advisable to remove intraocular lens and maybe the entire bag itself. Okay. Now we have gone through the theoretical discussion, we go to certain practical situations. These are cases out of our own follow-up. This patient underwent surgery through a temporal approach. There are two exudates at the back of cornea. There is no hypopion. Visual equity is 612. The flare is grade 2. There are few cells in the anterior chamber. Vitreous is clear and good retinal view. What is your approach? Lalit, Dr. Nayak and Dr. Dinesh. No intravitreal to be given at this moment. Okay. Continue your topical treatment. Maybe intensify steroids slightly more. How do you react to these corneal uh, exudates? Uh, this uh, on the temporal side you are asking? These two, one, two, no, just three, four. The dot, I think. Yeah? At yeah. the back of just the corner. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we, we have to follow this up closely. This follow could be up. a. All right, uh, Dinesh. Yeah. See, uh, basically, as uh, Lalit said, this is uh, f a stage for intensive treatment, which is topical. Remember, this is exogenous. It's coming from the anterior segment, the and side. topical treatment will cover everything up to the cycle, uh, up to the ciliary body. Not an indication for intravitreal. Not an inter. But the more important thing is what, and I've seen. I'm seeing this very often. Topical treatment seems to mean um, one antibiotic. This is not a stage for one antibiotic. This is, I would actually, I normally prefer a double coverage for both gram positive and gram negative which means actually concentrated kefazolin, concentrated okay. tobacin, Doc and Nayak. Vigamox also. Okay. So it's like you hit it hard. Fine. Dr. Nayak, you agree with them? No, I think probably means I will probably stick to one antibiotic itself, and but step up the steroid frequency and yeah. follow it very diligently and very okay. closely. Now, this is second presentation, no pain, 624 visual equity, intraocular pressure is raised. Generalized corneal edema, grade 2 flare, multiple cells in AC, no keratic precipitates, small exudates on the iris, vitreous is clear and good retinal view. The difference from the previous case is exudates on the iris and generalized corneal edema with a rise of pressure. Your approach, Dr. Nayak. In this, most probably first thing you have to control the intraocular pressure. Okay. Sometimes just because of rise intraocular, raise intraocular pressure, the corneal edema may show up and Quite. this is a fa and so, and of course, you have to watch carefully. No intravitreal antibiotics? No, no, Lalit? no intravitreal. No intravitreal. Lalit? The treatment of this and previous would be similar, except th this will require, in addition, IOP control as well as try to dilate the pupil Cyclopil. and maximum and try to, uh, you know, intensify the treatment. No okay. intravitreal at this moment. Now, this is third kind of presentation. Already there was a corneal pathology. There is a corneal scar. Patient has a sizable hypopion measuring almost 2.5 millimeters. Generalized corneal edema, grade 2 to 3 flare, multiple cells in anterior chamber, small exudates on the iris, vitreous cells are present, but the retinal view is good. Will you like to give intravitreal Dinesh in this case or you will still follow this case on topical? Okay. See, actually, uh, on one side we've said vitreous cells, the moment they come, you should think in terms of uh, endophthalmitis. <coughs> but the question is, you have a 624 vision. This could be a little bit of corneal edema, which you see in the upper part. The pressure is high. That could be contributing to this. And the, con the high pressure actually mitigates against most cases of endophthalmitis, except fungal endophthalmitis. Day two, you are not thinking of fung fungal endophthalmitis. So I would still think about giving very intensive treatment. One more point. In, co in patients with corneal opacity, the reaction is more. This is what I've been seeing, uh, that they get a little more reaction than the other patients. So I would hold for another day. You see, frankly speaking, IOP 24 is not a high IOP, not a high IOP. So I will stick to my regime of giving an intravitreal early, even at the cost of over-treating. Because simple intravitreal injection may save this eye rather than observation. Dr. Nayak? In this situation, I'll hesitate giving intra intravitreal. But then hypopian, definitely in four hours, if it is not reducing, Yes, it should show improvement in four hours itself, this type of situation. Then I will withhold, I would, otherwise, uh, yes. I, I would point out three things. One, <coughs> it is a devitalized cornea. 
if it is actually an infection, this will very badly involve this cornea and it will be difficult to save this cornea. Second, but Is this a pre-existing opacity? Yeah, that's yes, what yes, I said. That he told. Second, we have a sizable hypopion with a combination of vitreous cells. So I'll not allow vitreous to become like this hypopion. In this case, I'll not hold. I'll straightway give intravitreal antibiotic. Anybody in the audience would react differently to this slide? We'll, because this is we'll the invite questions yeah. from them in two minutes' time. Now, this what Dr. Nayak, we were discussing yesterday, that sometimes you get fibrinous exudates in the pupillary area. And uh, irrespective of these features, these cases have to be treated with intensification <coughs> of these steroids. Uh, Lalit, your approach to this situation? Here, here actually, this, uh, this is a frequent after VR surgery also. You said you get fibrinoid reaction. If the vitreous is clear, I will give one hourly steroids in this patient. And I will not give two antibiotics, I will stick to one antibiotic. But yesterday you told me atrochlor D. Yes, sir. Yesterday yeah. you said atrochlor D. Atrochlor D. Oh, atrochlor D. Yeah. Atrochlor D because Dilating. we believe that cyclopegia and that, this has a role important. in this. Now, this is uh, another presentation. Cornea is clear, few cells in AC, multiple large KPs, vitreous clear, good retinal view. This is on third post-operative day and multiple mutton fat KPs. To my mind, this was a pre-existing case of uveitis, right, which has flared up or which has been brought to the notice of surgeon after the cataract removal when he did slit temp examination. Your approach, Dr. Nayak? No, here also there is no question of intravitreal, but giving intensive topical steroids and following it up very closely. All right. If you go back to that slide, Surely, actually sir. those KPs look pigmented. Yeah, pigmented are KPs are, are a sign that this is something they old are old. which is there. Now, this is last presentation, obvious hypopion with uh, some pouring from above, which we could fortunately picture. 612 visual equity, grade 2 flare, vitreous cells and mild vitreous haze because red glow is not very proper. Will it be your indication for antibiotics? I think this is a, this is a, this is one of those situations where I think this course is uh, being used to sensitize people to an early uh, uh, intravitreal. But the important thing is I would not use amicacin in this case. Okay. Why? Amicacin has a risk of creating a macular infarction. Right. I don't want to create anything that, that can use take me the other way around because of… presentation. Yeah, because… Okay. Now, we quickly summarize and open the hall for audience. Infective endophthalmitis can be pain-free and without congestion. Mike, sir. Infective endophthalmitis can be pain-free and without congestion. Slit lamp examination on first, third and seventh post-operative day are crucial. Cells in vitreous are an absolute indication for intravitreal antibiotic by consensus of this faculty. Fundus examination opposed to Dr. Nayak's view should be a routine. Visual equity is a sensitive indicator both of catching infection and recovery from infection. Waiting for culture report is not mandatory to initiate therapy. Hypopion is a late sign. Pars plena injection is a harmless technique. When in doubt, it is better to give injection than to wait. In time diagnosis and drug treatment can avoid me, Lalit and Dinesh altogether from your practice and it is a manageable complication. Thank you so much and we invite questions from the audience. They can directly ask the faculty of their choice. Please. Can you hear me, sir? I have one question about uh, yeah. case four, fibrinous exudate. Do you think that if the patient is young or we are suspecting TAS, uh, simply topical and uh, that is steroid is enough or in, uh, adjunct systemic steroid should be you added. You are suspecting TAS. Yes. Oh, no. Based on, based that, on the uh, fibrinous exudate that you mentioned in yeah, yeah, yeah. list 4. Correct. In yeah. my opinion that I think in my experience only steroid, uh, topical steroid may not be a good uh, that is tool <coughs> to deal it if the patient is young. Would you have commenters? Uh, young and old does not make much of a difference, but or I agree with you, a lot of these patients require oral steroids in addition to topical steroids and cyclopedia. Yes. And uh, sometimes I have gone to the extent of giving intravenous steroid also. Yes, yes. You see, I have given intra intravenous decadron maybe twice a day and then give a shot for at least two, three days. These patients improve miraculously. Yes. yes. My question, Lalit, will be supplement to his question that uh, is it always uh, possible to be sure that it is TAS and it is not infective endophthalmitis? Sir, TAS, uh, what I believe is, TAS occurs in all cataract patients. 
Yeah. We toss, ta TAS is a toxic anterior segment syndrome. And the cause of TOS is very difficult to determine. It can happen because of ETO, residue, IUL, some problem, yeah. some, uh, you know. I uh, avoided this question for saving time, but this is very important question. Dr. Nayak, have you ever, he is a prolific cataract surgeon. He's from Mumbai, works in Hinduja Hospital, heads Hinduja Hospital. How often you have come across cases of so-called TAS in your practice of almost now 30 years? No, I'll tell you frankly, last year, similar course, when you asked this question, that time I said that I had diagnosed only one so far, where labeled it. And uh, after that, because after the discussion, probably your view was, was also something similar, that TAS is a condition which we over-diagnose. And you after that, that, again, I have never diagnosed any, any next case of TAS. So you can, you can just… Kindly see. project this slide. So TAS can ka. we go to that slide? Ha, yes, yeah, slide. Mere uska slide do, laptop ka. Okay, Previous. this no, I had omitted. No, no, uh, sir, can you go to the case? Beg your pardon? The case. If I'm not mistaken, that was day four. That's right, he's saying day four. Day four. TAS Ra doesn't start. TAS will present tomorrow. Oh, TAS, is, yeah, TAS, TAS does not start day four. Yeah, day TAS one, will present one. tomorrow. Yeah, but I take point. this opportunity to discuss TAS. Yeah, no, yes. So the basic point is, the first and foremost thing to follow up in any case to make an early diagnosis of endophthalmitis is, your follow up from my day point, one my to... My Sorry, your follow-up from day one to day seven. If from day one this picture was a deterioration, this is infection. That's it. If from day one this is improvement, then it could be TAS. So well, TAS task typically occurs in day one. You have diffuse conlidium. That's right. All over. And incidentally, if see, it was… TAS term belongs to those times when we were not doing FACO. It was uncommon to have a diffuse corneal edema following conventional extracapsular lens extraction. Yeah, now, when you are doing FACO in a compromised cornea, in a beginner's hand, in a case where there is a hard nucleus, you are causing generalized corneal trauma. It's not extremely uncommon to have a generalized corneal edema following FACO surgery on day one. Rather, it is common, especially in the elderly age group. And therefore, this table which I have taken from a Swiss, Swiss publication, which say that TAS onset is 12 to 24 hours, infectious endophthalmitis is 2 to 7 days agreed. They say that pain usually none but can be mild, usually severe to moderate in infection or endophthalmitis. This is incorrect. There can be no pain in infectious endophthalmitis with modern cataract surgery. Corneal edema, limbus to limbus, and it is specific to the area of trauma. This is also incorrect because there can be generalized corneal edema following phaco surgery, especially if it is associated with a rise of intraocular pressure. Anterior chamber, moderate to severe reaction, moderate to severe reaction in anterior chamber with increased white blood cells and fibrin. Hypopion may be noted. Here they say that fibrin is variable, hypopion often present. This is also incorrect. Hypopion does not present in 75% of cases on first post-operative day, which is the presentation day of TAS. Therefore, I very seriously question the existence of very entity TAS. And I think it is the tendency to over-diagnose TAS that we have been mixing cases of infective endophthalmitis, ignoring them and losing eyes and causing more and more vitrectomy Absolute, procedures. Absolutely. Yes, there is a question uh, from there. Uh, I, my question goes to Dr. Lalit sir and Dr. Dinesh sir. That uh, what would be your recommendation for persistent media haziness after vitrectomy for endophthalmitis? Persistent. After how long? After how long? After two weeks. See? Even after two weeks, okay. media is hazy. Lot of vitreous cells are there. You have done good PVD induction, good vitrectomy. Your on table media was absolutely clear. Retina was absolutely everything was okay. Now <coughs> even after two weeks, the media is 